Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, in today's video, it's finally happening. I got my hands on the Quaderno A4 Gen 2 device. This one is something that a lot of you have been requesting for a long, long time. And I have been uh, very, very apprehensive about getting this one for few very specific reasons. First of all, its availability is extremely limited, shall we say, and the sources that you can actually get it from are questionable at best, because there's no official Fujitsu store that you can go to, in Europe at least, and just order a product from a reputable seller. Now let's just be very clear, I don't find that the good e-reader and the find e-reader stores are reputable sellers because they have a bad reputation for a good reason. And you can just check out a ton of stories and reviews and everything about that regarding why that reputation is there. So I have actually resisted to order from either of these companies because I don't want to do business with them. And it's, if somebody has a reputation like that and they are doing certain practices that I disagree with, I will not do business with them. So that was basically leaving me with very few options other than importing directly from Japan, which I didn't feel like doing because the price of this is like $780 for just the device or a thousand dollars if you order from good e-readers unlocked google play version for for this which is absolute madness so and the interest of course the interest around the device is also quite low so that means that um yeah me actually cashing out a thousand bucks for this only to have um you know i don't know two three four thousand views on a video that's that's not gonna be even 20 bucks you know so that's doesn't really make too much sense but over time i have re uh, uh, received a lot of requests and i have re recognized that there's a problem regarding this device and the problem is you can't find reliable and impartial information uh, detailed information about this device so i decided to bite the bullet and actually order it now I'm going to be talking about my ordering ordeals in the in-depth review in depth because I think it's really, really important. But I will just issue a uh, short kind of summary here. I didn't order it from Good E-Reader. I didn't order it from Find E-Reader. I didn't e order it from the website called FujitsuQuaderno.com, which is not the official site of Fujitsu Quaderno to buy from, even though it's the first result that you're actually going to get when doing a search. That's actually Find E-Reader masquerading and misrepresenting themselves as a store, as an official one to actually, you know, avoid their bad ratings and things like that and sell you that one. So avoid FujitsuQuaderno.com, avoid uh, FindEreader.com and avoid GoodEreader.com. Uh, where did I then get it for? Well, I got it from an excellent Tokyo shop. I, in, in the in-depth review, you will see all of the details there, but it was from eBay. Yes, it's an eBay store. It's a 100% marked uh, rated eBay store with a 30 day guarantee. I got it a brand new device, not used, brand new, unopened for $545 and $10 for shipping. So $555 for Quaderno A4 Gen 2 versus $780 on either of the before mentioned sites. So that's my ordeal and that's the short summary of how I finally got into the possession of the uh, Quaderno A4. So with that out of the way, I just have one more thing to kind of say and then we can get on with the uh, unboxing. And that is, if you do like the work that I do and since I'm cashing my own cash to actually buy these things and uh, bring you independent reviews of obscure devices such as this one and share my purchasing experiences with you and share my advice with you as well, then you can head out to 
mydeepguy.com slash shop and check out the My Daily Organizer. And if you would like to support me, then you can actually purchase one. And not only do you support my work, but then you also get a really outstanding quarterly, yearly, monthly, weekly, daily organizer and um, diary planner that is helping thousands of people. And if you're interested to learn more, you can check out the, uh, in the description down below, you have the detailed playlist with a lot of details, and then you can see if that's a product for you or not. Now, with all that out of the way, let's unbox this puppy. Well, here we are, Quaderno from Fujitsu. This is the Gen 4, <laughs> Gen 4, Gen 2, A4 version. And this is my own device. So I purchased this, nobody sent it to me or anything like that. Let's unbox it. Let's see what we actually get in the package and then check out the first impressions. So quite an industrious, like a package thing, very simplified. Basically no plastic here, so you get the device. Well, there's plastic in packaging here, so we get, get a standard pen, extra set of nibs, uh, how many? Three, and an extraction, nib extraction tool, and a USB-C to USB-A cable. And you get a bit of documentation here. I would assume this would be warranty and things like that, but it's all in Japanese. So there is no English version of the text here. So it's a fairly standard package for devices of this type. You get the device itself, you get the pen, you get a little bit of extra nibs, three in this case, nib extraction tool, USB-C to USB-A cable, and standard documentation. So let's now focus on the device. Let's get it out of the protective pouch, which is kind of nice. So. This is the device itself. A part of your brain. <laughs> okay, so that's a part of my brain. Okie dokie then. And so this is the first impressions, exactly the same looking, weighing and design kind of a device like the Sony DPT-1, Sony DPT-2, Quirk Logic Paper, Quadrino uh, A4 Generation 1, A Quadrino Generation A uh, Generation 2. So uh, it's light, it's very flexible, like super, super flexible because that's how it's made. It's all plastic. So all of it is plastic. Very, very nice surface on the front with excellent reflectivity, which was a signature thing of the Sony DPT and Coderno and the Quirk Logic paper. Basically, everything is identical, even the weird offset that I think uh, I mentioned when I was reviewing uh, Quirk Logic paper is that this edge is slightly wider than this edge, which I think is really, really odd. It's still here, so it's exactly the same housing. The only difference that you're gonna notice is that on the top, instead of micro USB, we have a USB-C. But everything else is exactly the same. Oh, there's one more difference. We no longer have those little holes for the magnetic pen because, thankfully, this Gen 2 supports EMR pens. So that means that if you don't like this pen, and I talk, I'm going to talk about the pen a little bit later, there's a big likelihood that you won't. That doesn't matter because you can use any other EMR pen on this device, which is a huge, huge plus. So as mentioned on the top, you have reset, uh, data communication and charging, and the power button with an LED, nothing on any of uh, sides on the other, uh, uh, around the device. And on the top, you still have the home button here, which is not a touch button. It is a button that you have to kind of press and the NFC connectivity here. So um, yeah, pretty much standard stuff. No, um, there is no uh, uh, indentation around the bezel. And the thinness of the device is such that you still get that same strange kind of feeling and even more than on Quirk Logic Paper, which is the front is cover of this device is so, so thin and light that even with the mild pressure, 
you can basically start feeling components underneath it and uh, ridges of the plastic uh, bucket underneath it that actually cover it uh, together. So that's something, and, and here you can definitely feel some chips if you kind of press a little harder and you, around the screen, no, not so, well, there are areas where you can feel things. So that's something definitely down here, if you press even lighter, lighter pressing, you can feel that. Um, build quality, on the face of it, I was about to say that it's the same looking and feeling like with the Crocologic paper, but it's uh, not. This is going to be very difficult for me to kind of film, but I can try and maybe catch a reflection that's... So the only way that I can show this is maybe by catching a reflection in the area here, maybe you will be able to see it. There you go, here, somewhere around here. You see that thing kind of popping out? Well, uh, the the surface of the device is not uniform. It has some bends and it has some kind of imperfections. And uh, furthermore, if I take a look at the bottom here, this is also going to be relatively difficult to record, but hopefully you can see that around here and around here a little bit, the front layer or the screen protector or whatever it is, is not really uniformly kind of stuck. So you get, um, so you basically get this part here, which is, yeah, that, that that's not something, yeah, okay. Now we're talking. So that, that's not great build quality in my book, uh, especially for an expensive device like this, I mean, I feel that I could just pop it open and the way this is kind of popping. So maybe that's great for repairability factors. Yeah, definitely I could open it up because you can see, um, yeah, little ridges there. So you can pop it open and that's that. So that's fine. I don't mind that I can open it, but I do mind that it's not setting back perfectly in place. So it just makes me feel that not not that great and it's not something that I've seen on quirk logic paper for example as far as the straightness goes well no not really because it's okay but you do you can clearly see that we have this kind of concave type of a look hopefully the camera catches this and let's see on the other side yeah the same thing so whether or not this kind of non-straightness is by design or as a consequence of the materials that are used and simply the dimensions of a 13 inch that's the same thing is over here as well very very pronounced actually and on the other end as well so the whole thing is just a little bit wink so you have the concave on vertical and you have concave on um, on, on the horizontal axis as well. So it is not a perfectly flat surface. And as a, also in addition on the back, it's a lovely thin device, really, really thin and really, really light. So that part is great, but the back is, doesn't have any anti-slip feet. So it will slip around like, yeah, like it's nobody's business. And also because of that, you get to have quite a bit of flex and play here in uh, in the corners when you're writing and and you can see how much this one actually rises up when I'm pressing there. So that's something that's definitely a thing to consider. However, um, it is uh, on the plus side, it is flexible and from the uh, uh, um, from my memory the quo the the quirk logic paper which is sony dpd is basically the design of it is made to be flexible so that it's actually durable so that is something that you can definitely take into consideration and for sure a flexible device is more durable than a rigid one in case of falling because you know the casing and everything can absorb those impacts so that's actually an okay thing to have um, the plus side, another plus side of this design is, as I mentioned, the thinness and the lightness because it's extremely thin. 
uh, that's why it bends, I guess. And it's extremely light as well, especially for a device of this size. Very, very light and very, very comfortable and easy to kind of handle even in one hand if you wanted to. So overall, the design is exactly the same as the Sony DPT uh, Quaderno Generation 1 and Quirk Logic paper, which is to say it's an all plastic industrial like design, nothing, absolutely nothing fancy here. It feels kind of cheap, even though it's not cheap. Um, there are imperfections here, so the build quality is not what I would expect, especially not for the full price that main sales um, uh, channels are asking, which is like insane amount of stuff. And uh, so, yeah, the, the, the initial impression, if I was to pay like 800 bucks for something like this, I would not feel that I am getting my 800 bucks worth. That's basically the, the build quality and the design of the, of the Quaderno. Uh, generation 2 A4. Now on to the pen. Well, early books users should recognize this design because this is not a similar pen to the cheapest default books pen that was shipped with early early books devices such as uh, Note, uh, Note 1, Note 2, uh, Nova 2 and things like that. Um, it is the exact same one. That is the exact same bog standard generic EMR pen that has a button, it has an eraser and has of course a replaceable nib on top. There's nothing technically wrong with this pen except that it's uh, of, a re <laughs> of a quite a bad quality and it's really really cheap. Again, so it, this, this pen feels like a cost saving measure. And it would be okay if it was something that reflected in the price of a product, right? So then you can say like, well, cool, okay, fine, I'll get a cheap pen, but I know because I paid less. And the same thing kind of reflects here. Well, yeah, okay, I got the cheap design and the cheap um, build quality, but that's because it was a cost-saving measure so that uh, it reflects the price. But the problem here, and, and, and realistically, I don't have any problems with such practices if that was actually the case. However, it is not the case here because the price does not reflect the cost saving measures in both the design and build quality of the Quaderno A4 Gen 2, nor the default pen, the bog standard ancient uh, pen that is actually being shipped as standard with it. I mean, come on. We still, we, we see even the, this bog standard pen is really nothing to kind of write home about. And of course, there's no any magnets or any way of attaching the pen to the device itself. Now I also ordered a cover from, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that from where, but this is like a Quaderno cover for the A4 and it's actually very very nice. The material is really really good. You get uh, stitching all over the sides and it's a through stitching kind of a job which is nice and it feels like a moleskin for sure. It looks like a moleskin cover and it's really really good. It has a stretchy little holder for your pen. It has some uh, areas here for you to add some business cards, papers or prospects or brochures or whatever it may be. And you have a sticky pad here so that you can actually stick the device on it sort of like the early books devices had a method. So there's nothing really wrong and I'm a, I'm a fan of the sticky stuff. Uh, I really, really am. I think that it uh, saves cost, saves weight and the role of these covers, this is not a case. This is a uh, flip book cover. So its protective uh, uh, capabilities or protective attributes are maybe to the front and to the back of the screen, mm, kind of some, of course, and it, it can carry your pen. But drop resistance and case-like uh, resistance, this is not a case. Therefore, it does not provide any case-like features or functionalities, including drop protection. So that's something that you have to kind of keep in mind. That being said, really, really love the quality and I do love how it looks like. And in the corner you have the little Quaderno uh, logo embossed in 
I guess this is leather or artificial leather, not sure. But it's quite, quite nice. All right, so let's put the device in and see how that looks like all together. All right, something like this. Then I turn it around, I put the pen in here. Let's see, it holds, yep, holds normally as I would expect it to. Flip it back and that's that. So let's move the pen here. I love that the pen is of the same color, that champagne-ish kind of beige type of a color. And the overall package is actually quite nice. And now when you actually put it in this, then this whole quaderno thing starts to make sense. For me, this flipbook cover is quite an important actually addition to complete the whole package because then you can carry your pen and all things like that. So that I think completes the whole story of Quaderno and then it actually makes a whole lot more sense. Plus because it's using an adhesive, it's not too thick and the device itself is really, really thin. So it's not too thick and everything together is light. So it's a light package as well, kind of easy to handle. So overall, I do like the overall package and it makes quite a bit of sense. All right, so usually I would do like the first power up here on the camera so that you guys can uh, see it. But I have already done the first power up before because I wanted to set it up so that I can uh, get a document in and things like that. So I can at least show some of the stuff on uh, in the first impressions here and also to actually start reviewing it because very shortly there is going to be an in-depth review of the, of the Quaderno. A4 Gen 2 on my deep guide. The first impressions are, well, it is what it looks like. So it is more, and it offers to me at least from what I can see, it offers a little bit more than Quirk Logic paper uh, or a little bit different. I think that would be the fair way of saying it. So Basically, you have your uh, menu button and here you have your software update settings, find documents from the list, return to document, find documents in folder, schedule. It was really confusing. Like, why do you, how would you have a schedule? And that's like just a dedicated folder. It's a shortcut to this schedule folder where you can put your scheduler PDFs. So no, it's not a dedicated app. It's simply a shortcut to the folder. The, as you can see, the, the menu button doesn't really respond that well. You can easily create a new note. So I can just go like this, create a new note, and it's gonna ask me what type of note do I want. So all of these here are basically asking you what type of um, template the no new notepad is going to use. So you can choose from these three pages of templates that I can show you here. And you can choose not to and then just use the default one. And once you actually click on OK, it will form it up and then it will actually display the note. So the note itself is a very minimal design. You will notice that basically it, uh, it tries to be as minimal as it can be, which is a nice thing because it's a focus device. And you can tap in the top to expose the additional menus and in the bottom, I think, yeah, on the bottom, you can also expose it and hide it that way as well. So this one is to basically uh, show and hide additional menus that you have. Something that's very, very easy to miss and it's kind of an important one. Um, then you have your recently read. So this is nothing to do with the document. This is just easily to skip to uh, previously read uh, um, um, notepads or uh, documents and things like that. One of the things that's very interesting and very, very different than in other devices is that Quirk Logic, uh, sorry, Quirk Logic, Quaderno is using uh, its its note uh, uh, notepad files are actually PDFs, right? So it doesn't have a dedicated native file. So that's something that is a major difference and maybe an advantage to uh, some people. So something to definitely keep in mind. So here you have your undo, redo, and then you have your tools 
that are exposed here, and these are your writing tools. And it's fairly limited, but there are options. So you have your one, two, three pens, we have a marker and a highlighter and an eraser. You can choose different uh, types of colors so that you can have black, blue, red, white. And then here we have red, white, black, blue, and yeah. So I haven't really tested this yet, so I'm not entirely sure what the difference is here for the color. Uh, maybe that's just to switch between two default colors that you want, so you can easily switch between maybe the red and black. I assume that's the case. You don't have the ability to have a custom uh, ink size, so you just have these five presets, medium, less thin, uh, thicker, very thick. And then we have this option here, which is to rotate the toolbar around. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that is to rotate the toolbar around in the counter uh, clockwise manner. Then you click here and then it closes, and that's that. Uh, in the hamburger menu, you have additional uh, options, such as directly jumping to a page, thumbnails, annotation list, you can display documents side by side, you can have a two-page spread, you can have page flow, do you want it to flow from right to left or left to right, insert a new page, delete annotations, change current document name, copy document, and then you have set to sleep screen. If you have a current screen, you can just set that as a sleep screen and you can delete this document. So fairly kind of uh, comprehensive set of tools. Everything is where you think that you would want it. The only thing that's kind of weird is that you have to kind of press on this button to expose the lasso tool. So you can select the handwriting. So for example, lasso tool is not in your main tools. It's completely separate and you, there's no way of adding it in here. That's kind of bizarre as far as I'm concerned. And you also have the eye icon to hide the memorization uh, area. That I haven't tested yet, so I don't know how it works. So that's something to definitely uh, test out. And this is the uh, zoom selection area. So, okay menu, but fairly kind of rudimentary. Now, I'm gonna do the writing here because uh, this truly does feel really, really good, exceptionally good, like the Quirk Logic paper did, but it's better because you have the ability to use different pens, and even though this is not the best pen, it's using an okay nib, so the writing feel is actually quite good, and if you upgrade to a better pen, then the writing feel is just gonna get even better. So here's how that sounds. Alright, so as you could hear, it is very scratchy and extremely paper-like. The satisfaction of writing on this one is really, really good. The second thing, I haven't really measured it yet, but the distance between the, the pen to ink distance is really, really minimal. There is a very, very nice sensitivity, so you don't have to press like crazy. So all of that is really, really good and consistent to the experience that I had with the Quirk Logic paper. Things that I do like are that the uh, latency seems to be, while not on the fastest side of things, uh, it's certainly fast enough that you don't have to actually kind of think about it or consider it a slow device. So. I don't know exactly where this is going to fall, maybe around 40-ish, 
type of an area, 40-ish milliseconds, but I'll run the test to test and then we will see. So expect that once I do run the tests on it, that we're going to see very good uh, writing latency, not the fastest, but certainly under 50 milliseconds. That it's, that's at least how it feels like to me right now. I expect it to have uh, in the screen resistance test, one of the best or the highest paper-like screen resistances, which is if that's what you're looking for, that's excellent. However, you have to keep in mind that that's going to eat away the nibs like crazy because this is a rough surface, so your nibs are going to spend very, very quickly. However, unlike with the Quirk Logic paper, where it was really difficult to find the replacement nibs, this is not a problem on the Quaderno because it's using EMR pens and then you can use any replacement nibs that are far, far easier to obtain and cheaper. And I also expect that the ink to pen distance is going to be under one millimeter or significantly under one millimeter because that's what it looks like so far. So all of these things kind of elevate the value and the, uh, the point of the Quaderno A4. So there is no, as far as I can see, there is no uh, handwriting to to text recognition. Um, and let's just see how does the selection thing uh, work. So if I do select an area here, yeah, there's no handwriting recognition. I can just cut, copy, cancel, or move it around. And the performance is okay. It's nothing spectacular, but you know, it is what it is. So. It's usable, um, nothing spectacular, but it's not trying to be like a flagship innovation kind of thing. No, this is a uh, legal notepad replacement as far as writing goes. So now let's get into the first look of the documents and how that looks like on Quaderno. All right, so now I opened up one of the regular documents that I test. And one of the things that you can use in notepads and in uh, PDFs, because it, notepads are PDFs, so they're going to function exactly the same, um, is that you can just slide with the pen there. I couldn't get it to work with my fingers, so maybe it's just with the pen. And you have these little arrows which take you back to the previous uh, page that you're coming from and things like that. So that's something to definitely kind of uh, keep in mind. It's very, very handy and it's easy to miss. Uh, other than that, the actual interface, well, it's exactly the same because as I mentioned, the notepads are PDFs. So whether you're writing in a notepad with a template there, you just have the ability to insert new pages and things like that, or you open up an existing uh, 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 PDF the tools are going to be exactly the same. So you have same toolbar here with the exact same functionalities and the same weird part here. So that is a really, really good thing. Consistency of the user interface, something that I really, really like. As far as the image uh, quality goes and the performance of the device, it's on a sluggish side of things, but it's nothing terribly sluggish. So there's no problems really there if if you're looking at it from a perspective of an e-ink device, of course. So um, that works perfectly fine. The text is quite nice and readable. So let's find something that has both bold and everything. So even though it's 207 PPI, all of the 13.3 inch devices are 207 PPI, it's actually quite readable and easy to uh, kind of maintain because of the large, um, a uh, large format of the device, which is great. However, that consistency of tools is something that's a little bit of a problem here, uh, in a document especially, simply because you'll notice that I don't have actually anything new to add to this menu. In fact, I, I have one option less, which is I can't insert a page. Uh, but I think I can, yeah, I can, and I can't delete the page. So yeah, that's the only difference between notebooks and the documents. But the thing that I'm missing is, or are, formatting capabilities of the device, and they seem to be severely lacking. So yes, I can uh, pinch to zoom, and it's excruciatingly slow and unresponsive to the point that you don't really know 
whether you've done it or not and basically you know it feels completely ancient especially when we compare it to uh, where the remarkable books are this just feels way 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 older and and much much worse so it's not to say that it doesn't work it's just that this was acceptable maybe in 2006, 2012, but already yeah, in the later 2010s, it was too slow and this is something that you have here. So maybe some of you will say, well, okay, I don't care about that because I have my selection tool here. So I can just select, I wanna zoom in to this, right? So I can use my zoom in tool and that's great. Excellent, um, except that I can't, make this a persistent zoomed state. So this is just going to be here on this page. And if I want to flip, the page is just going to go to the side and just act weird. And basically he won't be able to flip a page at all. I can just move it around because I'm in this mode of zoomed in state. So yes, you can use this to zoom into a section, for example, and then you can read it. Um, but you can't really change the formatting and the zoom state on a persistent level throughout the whole document. And for me, that I think is a bit of a problem, especially for a document that is a, a, a device that is a, so limited to begin with, it needs some of these functionalities to actually make it a proper replacement of uh, that, that, that can be used easily for these types of functionalities. There's no easy way for me to find to bookmark things. And I do know that there is an option somewhere uh, there. There was like tap an eye icon to hide the memorization area. So I don't know what that is. I will have to kind of figure out how that works. And considering that I don't have an English user manual, I'll have to kind of try and dig out and see if I can figure out what that does, the eye memorization area, but maybe, maybe that's a thing that would kind of add a bookmark. But yeah, you don't have anything advanced here from what I can see. It's very, very bread and butter. And that's pretty much it. The only things that you do have is that you can have a two page spread, same as you could with the, uh, with the notebooks. And then you can just simply read the book that way. But then again, we have that formatting problem even more pronounced because in a, in a two page spread, then it would be very, very helpful to actually have that formatting so that you have a persistent zoomed state on a per page level, something that books and Supernote have, um, but nope, we don't have it here. And that's definitely something that I think is lacking. As far as the performance and image quality goes, it's okay. It's not that bad. I mean, it's not the best. And as you can see, it's fairly on the darker side of things and it doesn't, uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't dither uh, images. So there's no dithering. So you will have color banding in images in the documents that have images. And because the default is set in such a way, obviously to favor text and clarity of readability of text, when you have image content displayed on it, you will have it fairly, fairly dark. As you can see, this is really, really dark and it's uh, kind of losing quite a lot of details in the de in the darkness, in the contrast and the dithering here is, as you can see, fairly, fairly obvious. Um, so yeah, not something that I would say that is uh, impressive and not something that I would prefer to use this device for. So I would stick with text documents primarily. And if you happen to run into an image, you know, so be it, we'll, you'll deal with it, but it's definitely not comic book material type of a device. So, all right, I've already almost went into an in-depth review and I've covered like almost in-depth review, the notes and the documents here. So I'm gonna save some of the content for the in-depth review to actually show you all of that stuff and to test out a little bit more. So it's a bit more comprehensive. 
Um, the other thing that I can also mention here is that there isn't a really easy, straightforward way of getting the documents onto your uh, device here. You have to install a companion app and I had issues actually downloading it, installing it and getting it to work. Once I did solve those issues, then it works perfectly fine. But again, even there, it was not a straightforward experience. So all in all, my first impression of the Quaderno a4 Gen 2, unfortunately, it's exactly what I thought it would be and exactly re the reason why I didn't uh, cover it and I didn't want to buy it and I didn't want to do it. But a lot of people actually asked for it and I recognize that there is a lack of data or, or, or lack of resources, of reliable resources, resources available regarding this device. And um, the availability and pricing of it is actually very, very questionable. But yeah, that's, um, that's, this is the reason why I wasn't impressed or excited about Quaderno because it's old, it's limited. What it does, it does well. Certain things it does really well, but those certain things are very, very limited. And we do have other devices on the market that can do these things equally well, if not better but also can do so many other things also well. Where does it excel? Thinness, portability, and paper-like feel. That's my first impression where this device excels, but everything else, first impressions are actually quite underwhelming. Well, alrighty then. So finally, Quaderno A4 in my hands, a part of my brain. So yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of afraid that I'm holding in my hands a part of my brain. Shouldn't I go to the doctor first? Anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting kind of to see what the first impressions are. I have expected more. Um, actually, no, this is exactly what I was expecting it to be. But um, do stay tuned for the in-depth review because I cover pretty much everything that you might be concerned with, especially the, um, um, the communication between the the device and the PC and things like that. So while it is quirky and it is, you know, kind of limited and things like that, it does have certain sets of values that are kind of specific. So it might be something that's interesting to people uh, to actually consider this device. So don't dismiss it out of hand and check out the upcoming the uh, in-depth review. And then you might see if Quaderno a4 Gen 2 is the device for you or not. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found the video useful, informative, or entertaining. If you did, please like, subscribe, and ding the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next, next time, next video. Bye.